Welcome to the Doc Rosa Frappuccino answering the review. Number one, Doc Rose or Frappuccino answering, you decide. Hi, I'm James and welcome to the start of this new series. When you hear a child say in their prayers or just in conversation with you, thank you, God, for my father. Thank you, God, for my mother. Thank you for Jesus, depending on if you're in or pursuing the Christian faith or not. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for my sisters. Thank you for my pet animals. Why does a child do that? Why have you done this, maybe even on a daily basis for years? Waking up first thing in the morning. Could it possibly be because you have a deep appreciation for what I'm going to read to you right now out of the good book and then I will conclude with the principle that will build upon this series time in and time out for as long as it continues. So we have to start with one. In Psalms 36, verses 7 through 9, I'm going to read these verses, but conclude with verse 9. This is Psalms 36, verses 7 through 9. Let's begin. How precious your loyal love is, O God! In the shadow of your wings... The sons of men take refuge. They drink their fill of the rich bounty of your house, and you cause them to drink of the torrent of your delights. Verse 9. With you is the source of life. By your light we can see light. Those quotes from the verses actually come from the New World Translation of the Holy Writings or Holy Scriptures. So why do you thank God first thing in the morning and then thank everything in the order of life, you see, all the way down to yourself? Because in verse 9, it states clearly that God, the true one, whose name some people may call Jah, some people may just say the ultimate one, the true one, the grand creator, which some of those are his titles, yes, all the way to Yahweh, and then, yes, Jehovah as a name himself, a personal name. All of this shows that you are respecting the principle that is mentioned here, the fact, the truth, the universal fact, which is also a principle that will be built upon, is that the true God is the source of life. And so, with the light that it expounds upon here, it is saying that the source of life, which is the true God, Jehovah, is also the one that provides the light to understand the knowledge about himself and about everything else, including, yes, the principles that we walk by to please him and to be able to enjoy the bountifulness of this earth and as some of us know, the future of the universe as well. Thank you for being here on this Doc Rose or Frappuccino knowledge moment. This was number one. And remember, the principle to keep in mind on how you decide many things as we will expound upon them is that God is not only the source of life, but he is also the source of the light to see and understand life.
You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality. So, Doc Rose or Frappuccino? You decide. Number two, Doc Rose or Frappuccino? You've heard me state over the years one of the best things a parent can do is teach their child how to have empathy without seeing someone go through the process of suffering, without having to put them through certain changes or hardships in order for them to get it. Now, from an early age, you may be saying, like others have said, well, Children will be children, boys will be boys, and don't we have to see people go through hardships in order to understand it ourselves? Granted, depending on how we're made up, that is the case that, hey, unless you experience it for yourself sometimes, some people uh, just may not get it, you see. And so I understand that argument. All the same, what the focus is on is making sure that you may happen to see all these different events happen in life, but not because your child is the one that actually caused it. So how do you help in that from a young age? Last week, in number one, we talked about the source of life. And so it is important to know that if there is a respect for the source of life from the true God himself, it has an effect on the child. Well, what do I mean? In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it states, The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. It also states, Only fools despise wisdom and discipline. So when parents teach their child from an early age, yes, just right out of infancy, if not still in there, to love God, to respect him. And you even heard prayers such as God is great. God is good. Then it goes on to talk about, let me thank God for the food. Also at night when they say their prayers, please, Lord, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. See, all of those things are what? Having the beginning of knowledge instilled in them about the grand creator and his power. Now, People may say next, what about that verse, how it starts off saying the fear of Jehovah? Why are you teaching your child to be terrified of God? Is that really the case? No, it is not. And you may say, doesn't it say the fear of Jehovah? Yes, it does. But let me ask you this question. (laughs) Do you fear your mother? Do you fear your father? There have been persons that stated even after the age of 18 or 19, when they would no longer come under the rod of discipline side of things of their parents, is that they loved their parents so much that it still did hurt them if their mother or father became disappointed in them. See, the fear was not that the parent could any longer go say, look, go get that belt because you need to be disciplined for actually hurting someone else you see in school or uh, getting in trouble some other way. But no, it was because they valued and respected and loved, see, their parents that much. It is on the same type of scenario. Same type of level, you see, that God is uh, expressing here. This verse is expressing that when you love someone that much, there is a wholesome fear that you do not want to disappoint them. So, 
What is something that can help a child from an early age to actually empathize with persons without making sure they're the ones causing the problem against them? It is what? Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Yes, that beginning of knowledge of God should be the first things, the start of the first things in teaching children how to get along with one another and respecting God himself. Take care of yourself. Three, Doc Rose or Frappuccino, you decide. A child is taught many things by his parents when he's growing up. Of course, this applies to the girls as well. And up to a point until the teenage years, for the most part, a parent can say, don't do this or do this because it will make God happy. And the child would just go right along with it and believe it. However, a certain point in their life, as I mentioned before, which starts in the teenage years, it really becomes important that that emphasis on training from infancy had reading involved with it, you see. Why is that the case? Well, as you parents most likely know, they hit the teenage years sometimes and then all of a sudden you don't know nothing anymore. And especially some of the events or experience of your life, which is very much valid and applicable because it's now you who are the grown up, you know, not just mom or dad anymore, or you may just be old fashioned among other things. Uh, some children all of a sudden, as I said before, do not value what you're saying, maybe for a few moments, and maybe even longer than that, sad to say. However, getting back to the infancy part, the reason why it is so important to have reading of the good book involved with that is because, just like one verse says, you train up a boy according to his way, and he will not depart from it. So, when it gets to the point that, let's say, uh, your child is thinking about uh, following the crowd in this area or that area, and you know the crowd may not be up to any good with the way that they're actually treating people. You may know this from experience. You can see the writing on the wall, etc., etc. And so, what can you do? You may say, you know, God don't like this. Don't hit anyone. Don't take anything from anyone. Don't steal from anyone. But have your children actually seen God say this for themselves uh, from his word. Right in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1, it starts... The Lord said to Moses, and you can see he was directing him to speak to the entire assembly there. And so in verse 11 through 13 of Leviticus chapter 19, this is still the true God in the heaven speaking to Moses during that time of his people. And yes, the true God is still very much alive today, and he is saying this to everyone, and this is what we can relate to the children. Remember with that reading involved in learning in order for them to have embedded principles to what? Train themselves up so that when the difficulties comes in those years, and even when they say, I don't agree with your mom or dad, well... These verses, like in verses 11 through 13, will stick with them. And as they still have their relationship and pray and talk to God, he will remind them of thoughts just like this. Words just like this in Leviticus chapter 9, starting with verse 11. 
He said, Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. In verse 12, he said, Do not swear falsely by my name, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. This is coming from the New International Version. And in verse 13, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. So there you have it. Do you think the teenager will retain these verses that they have read from infancy, from your good training? Thank you for being here. Have a good day. Four, dark roast or frappuccino, you decide. Throughout the day, whether we're in school or if we're actually in the workplace, even just going on a trip, there is some type of distress at times experience from the stoplight to a test exam to actually feeling very sorry for what a friend may be going through. During those times, especially when a parent is talking to a child, the parent tries to encourage the child by sharing different things. And when I say different things, I'm not talking about just gratitude, but actually how the parent really does feel for the child. How a friend really does feel towards the other friend. And what does it do? It gives them encouragement. Yes, it imparts courage to them so that the distresses they may be feeling on their heart and mind, they start to feel better. And in time, because of those thoughts, those helpful words that were given, hey, uh, they just become stronger and stronger because they had value and courage imparted in them. Now, with that being said, there are situations where sometimes uh, people may not have as much association or encouragement. And then there are other factors, yes, even health-wise, that may be affecting the person's outlook on a situation or life in general. And so, you know, this is a conscious decision. This happens to be some person's choices that they may end up, uh, you know, not only drinking orange juice or other uh, health fruits and things of that nature to help themselves. But yes, uh, there is something that they may go in talking with their personal position and the position, the physician may actually, you know, prescribe something for the person. Now, on another note, did you know that there is something called a placebo? What is a placebo? Well, it is actually something that may be prescribed for a person, something they said they are enduring, you see, uh, health reasons that they don't feel good. And it can be anywhere, you know, on the body. It can be even in the mind. However, what the placebo is, uh, uh, back in the olden days, uh, persons used to kind of make a joke, you know, privately and say, well, you know, they got the salt water, you see. And what they were basically saying is whatever this individual was prescribed, maybe unknowing to them at the time, uh, was nothing that would, you know, set their body in a very rough state or even make it sick because really it was, it couldn't do any more harm than just regular water and salt, okay? And so a placebo is something that may be given to a person and it just gives them that extra uh, attitude of feeling like, hey, I got what I need. Remember the key you probably already picked up is they weren't told maybe that it had less ingredients in it than what they thought. And so what does that show us? The power 
of the mind. You see, the power of a positive outlook to actually sometimes help us rather than any external uh, situ- uh, medications or anything that we may take. That's just an FYI. So with that being said as well, people do things like meditate, you see, a person's exercise. There are a variety of things persons do to make themselves feel better when they are in distress. And yet, going along with everything that we talked about, notice how God's word had said, Many, many eons of years ago, really hundreds upon thousands of years ago, in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, God inspired for his words to say on paper, you see, he had a writer in Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bone. So that goes to show that when the parent or the friend is trying to encourage you to give you something that you can hold on to, and then from eating right to exercising, among, you know, other things you may do to make yourself happy, it really does affect your heart. It really does affect your body. It really does affect your health. Yes, in principle, really being genuinely, authentically, you know, positive. Now, that doesn't mean that you may not be fighting the battle, but all the same, being able to know that you are worth something and that you do have reasons to be happy, even if it's just God himself encouraging you to say, keep your head up. It's going to be all right. And you know what? Those different gifts and skills and talents that you're using to the best of your ability to help yourself and others, hey, you can be happy about that. So keeping your heart in a good mood as well as you can It does affect your health. And yes, it is even better than the best placebo (laughs) as good medicine. Take care. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality. So, Doc Rose or Frappuccino? You decide.